Alright, we have a package. So, let's have a look at what's inside. I've got a pretty good idea of what's inside, and if you've read the title of this video, I'm sure you'll have a pretty good idea of what's inside too. Let's open it up, and see what lurks within. It's like Christmas morning. And that was a terrible sniper impression, and I promise I will never do that again. Looks like it. There it is. Okay, so we have 650 watt power supply, a Ryzen 7 CPU, um, memory. Motherboard. Oh, and look what they've also found. Yep. Alright then, I think it's about time to get to work. Are those neighbours making noise again? Oh yeah. The immediates are out there again. Which the camera's refusing to focus on. It's focusing on the window. And really, it's the middle of winter. And they're out there having a party. You'd think they'd party inside. Yeah, like I'm saying, let's get to work. But first, I gotta have my dinner. Well, dinner's over. Let's get to the important stuff. Alright, well, I think it's about time to start ripping parts out of my old computer. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, but it is dusty in there. I'm actually quite ashamed of it. I have no idea it gotten that bad. So then the first thing to take out, um, other than this piece of paper, I don't know why I put that in there, is take out my graphics card. That's why I didn't order a graphics card, because I already still have a pretty decent graphics card, so that's going to go in the new build. I just need to find a screwdriver so I can actually unscrew it from the thing. Excuse me. Safety. I've got about an hour left on my memory card. I hope this video isn't going to come to an hour long, but if it's an hour long, it's an hour long. And there's lots of stuff to watch. See, you connect to here, I'm going to take on the hook that if I can just get my feet there. The water cooler, I, I'm hoping that I can still use this. I don't know if I will be able to. Might just have to go with a stock cooler if it doesn't fit, but if it does. Alright, let's carefully remove what I've got. Finally! Oh well, that is filthy dusty. I'll do something about that. And that's good for another ten years. I get my mobo out. This could be a bit of a. Actually, I think first take the power supply out. I think that would be a better idea first. Oh, you cannot even see what I'm doing. Let's move the camera out a bit. Oh, it's the wrong way. That way. Have a look at this power supply. See the rating is apparently the white rated power supplies aren't very good, I didn't know that, but 
a little mistake that I made when I built this computer. Now this power supply had the 8-pin CPU power, uh, power connector on it, and I didn't know, because I was young and foolish, that you could actually split that. So if you got a 4-pin CPU connector, you could just split the thing and I wouldn't have had to sacrifice a bit of cable. Alright, let's take out the SATA plugs. Now this motherboard isn't going to just rot away in some corner in the room, it is going to get another use. Because this is going to become the new Franken PC. Alright, let's unplug all those little things in there. Let's take off our cooler. There we go. Still hanging on there in that corner. Come out! It's nice out here. I'm going to treat you with kindness. Um, yeah, that's a bit better. I'll just detach this. I'll just find the screw where I put it in. I haven't a clue what I just said then. Some people might think that my quality of workmanship is laughable. And it is. But it's how I do things, so shut up. You know I've got a good idea. So I don't use the screws. A speaker here. Magnet. For a minute there, I thought they were aluminium screws and they weren't sticking. There's one more screw in there? Yeah, there's one more screw in there. Let's just get them out. Oh, no, wait, I missed another screw. Let's go right there. Et voila. Wow, does that look tiny? I thought it was way bigger than this. Tiny little motherboard. Well, it's so much bigger when it was in the computer. Alright, that's all cleaned out now as best as I can. It's amazing the kind of things you can find inside a computer. I always knew my computer had a bug. Well, I think it's about time to put the new hardware in. Like they say, out with the old, in with the new. Start with the motherboard. Well, let's just put you over there. Oh yes, look at all these goodies. User's guide, that's going to come handy because I'm going to need to know what the pins are. Got driver disc, going to need that. Cable for something or other. Screws. And the motherboard itself. Now, I'm hoping that I can still run Windows 7 on this because although this is almost certainly designed for Windows 10, I don't really want to use Windows 10. You know, I've heard the horror stories and everything. Also, I've got to find out what all these do. So, let's see, that looks like that's a USB. B cable for the front USBs. Good thing these are all labeled. Let's see, this one is the goes to the reset switch. This one goes to hard drive LED. This one is power LED. I don't know why that's split onto two different things, but and that one goes to the power switch. So what the hell is this? Oh, well, that's the front audio inputs and outputs. I'm not going to be using them. Okay, I hope the, I hope you can see what I'm doing. So, 
take out my motherboard. Oh, actually, I think I better put these in first. Yeah, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Let's unclip your back plate. anything before I put it in. So. That would be a bit of a shame, wouldn't it? Okay. And hopefully the screws will line up. I'm probably in the way at the moment. Oh, that's good. I'm not going to have to move any of the mounting screws. Right, that's in. Took a little bit of doing, but we're there. Now I've got to figure out where all these go. So I'm trying to find this connector right here, just for the power LED and the speaker. And I think that is this one right there. So I'm going to connect my wires. Yeah, so let's see. We've got two power LED plus connectors and one power LED minus connector. Find the power LED. Is this the power LED? No, that's power switch. HDD LED. I'm finding everything except what I'm looking for. Power LED. There we go. So, looks like the minus connects here. And the positive just can go to either of those two pins next to it. Okay, that's all connected. Good thing I had a second look through the manual, because it turns out that's where they're supposed to be connected. So, I'll connect the front USBs now. Good thing it's already got this little header on it, and it matches up with what's in the manual, so I'm just going to stick that in there. If it'll go in there, of course. You know what? Screw this thing, I'll just put it in like that. A little bit of a scare when I was opening this, uh, opening this box. Found the cooler all right, but I couldn't find the brain. It was in a little compartment that I just hadn't seen. So let's put this in. Pull this up here. Find a little arrow which points says which which orientation the CPU is in. I don't actually see one, but there should be one somewhere. There we go. There was a little arrow on the what you call it, the socket. It was just very faint, and I couldn't see it. Right, let's attach a cooler. All right, let's put the cooler on. Which way around does this go? goes on that way. I don't know if it goes on that way or that way. I need to find the fan connector. Now, it's a CPU fan. It seems to have three CPU fan connectors. Now this one is labelled CPU fan 1, so that's the one I'm going to use. Get that nice and secure. Put in the PSU. For a cheap PSU, it's got a fair amount of weight to it. Just undo this cable tie here so we can. I think I'm doing the wrong way. My mouth is not working, I keep saying the wrong things. Oh, yeah, that could be a bit of a problem because the fan is on the bottom. Uh, let's see, is it going to 
could be too much of an issue. No, I don't think it is. It doesn't look like it's going to get like it's going to get obstructed by anything, so that's all right. Oh and yeah, almost forgot. It's going to need memory if it's going to work. That was tough. Right. Well, um, let's connect up power then. So. There's my power supply. I could just get that into there. And I guess to my drives. Oh! Memory card! I don't mean memory card at all. I mean graphics card. Alright. This is the moment of truth. Everything is wired up. Got a spare monitor connected up. And a spare hard drive. There's no operating system on that hard drive, but as long as it starts up and we get a post, we're good. Okay. Let's see if power's on. I must have missed something somewhere. My mistake. Just didn't have the thing in far enough. Well, it's on. I'm not seeing any sign of life. From the monitor, though, it's kind of strange. Oh, oh, I spoke too soon. It's taking a little bit of time to get started. I think it's going through an endless cycle of rebooting. But at least we have a post, so that's good. Okay. It lives! It's alive! It's alive! Right, we've just got to put an operating system on that disk and uh, obviously connect up my keyboard and my mouse as well. The keyboard seems to be working, so that's good. I was a little bit worried, I must say, because I couldn't get the RAM in properly at first. And also there's a little crack right there in the corner but that doesn't seem to be causing any issues. The question is, can we install Windows 7 on this thing or will I have to upgrade to Windows 10? Well it looks like I'll have to install Windows 10 after all because try to install Windows 7 on this computer and it just doesn't want to know. The Windows 7 installer comes up but after that the keyboard and mouse just do not respond. And even though I've tried the keyboard and mouse in just about every available USB port. So, I'm going to make a bootable US Windows 10 USB. Well, it doesn't say which edition of Windows 10, it just says Windows 10. Uh, yep, we want 64 bit. But flash drive, well I've got a 32 gigabyte flash drive in there. Uh, yeah, this one here that says Windows 7, that had the Windows 7 installer on it, so I'll put it on that one. Yeah, and let's download Windows 10 and install it onto there and see what happens. Should have a license to download these because, you know, it's Windows. But I don't have one. Because, fudge you Microsoft. So this is done, I'm going to install Windows XP, I mean Windows 10. I'm prepared for being spied on and having stuff crammed down my throat that I don't really want. But yeah, I guess you have to make sacrifices. Tell you something though, this thing is whisper quiet. Can't hear the fans at all. Okay, well it's the next day now. Uh, Windows XP is f Windows XP. What am I saying? Windows 10 is finally installed. I can't even begin to tell you how long this took to install, and all the things that kept bugging me about. No, I don't want Cortana. No, I don't want OneDrive. No, I don't want to enter all my personal details. So anyway, after countless hours of please wait screens and thinking it had actually gotten stuck in a loop a couple of times. It's finally installed, had a little play around with Microsoft Edge, and let's just say Firefox quickly became 
my default browser again. And I'm just going to use Ninite here and install most of my stuff. Alright, let's save that. Really should be looking through the camera, but you know. <clears throat> right, I'll go into my downloads and get that installed. I'll say one thing for Windows 7. I mean, Windows XP. I mean, Windows 10. Despite how long it took to install, it did run right out the box. I didn't have to install any of my drivers. Ethernet works, sound works, graphics works. It seems to download all the required drivers automatically, which is... And I'll give it that. I'll give a point to Windows 10 for that. And then let me just find my downloads so we can do this. There's my Nanite. Oh, let's just install these things. And I'll be right back. We're almost there. Okay, that's done. And my desktop looks a lot more populated now. Well, a little more populated anyway. We'll see how well Crash Insane Trilogy works. I mean, it works alright on my other computer as long as I turn the settings all down. But I know on this one, I can play it much better. Here we are with Crash Insane Trilogy. So I always just think it was pronounced. But we don't want to play as Crash, do we? Crap. Didn't mean to bring that up. We want to play as cute little Coco. Because I have a crush on her. I don't think I should have just admitted that. Loading. So this is the first time I've ever been able to play this in full 1920 by 1080. And this shows just how good I am at games. Yeah, I really need two hands free to play this. Okay, just trying out the Sonic Anniversary DX, whatever you want to call it, Sonic World DX. We don't have a weak computer, do we? We have a strong computer. Let's have a look, see how this looks. Don't know if it's gonna work with my controller. Menus seem to work with the controller. Yeah, these controls are uh, weird. Not exactly what they say they are, was jump. Okay, at least that one says what it is. I'm not gonna bore you with going through a game. Cause I really need two hands on the controller to do this. Whoa. Yep, removal bloatware. I don't need all those stupid things. Oh well, here it is. Back in its corner. And I'm installing Windows XP into VirtualBox. So I'll be able to use my video editing software again. Okay, I just gotta share this with you. In all the times I've set up Windows XP, I have never heard this music playing. And up until now, I thought it was a joke. I'm installing it in the virtual machine. I'm hearing it. Oh, it's so good to see Windows XP again. It's like seeing an old friend who you haven't seen for years and years and years. 
Bet you never thought you'd see Windows XP showing this. Well, like I was saying, I think it's about time to end this video because my battery's running out. And also, so is space on my memory card. Now I've got to edit this. It's probably going to be like 50 million hours long, but yeah. Until next time, goodbye.